the landscape of higher education is continually evolving, driven by advancement in technology, changes in societal needs, and a growing understanding of effective teaching and learning methods. We had the pleasure of interacting with Dr. N. R. Alamelu, Principal Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Coimbatore, who shared with us the several ways in which teaching and learning processes at engineering colleges are developing. In engineering education, uh, till a few years back, the pedagogy was a sort of a structured curriculum. The syllabi contents for the various courses as part of the curriculum and then assessment, grades, degrees, etc. Now we have moved away from that, which I could even call it a sort of a transformation where the curricula are not anymore structured. There is a lot of flexibility in the curriculum, which is eventually a choice based learning outcome based curricula and syllabi. The students could register for the courses of their interest, of their choice, take up these courses. On the teaching learning process side, uh, we have moved more towards uh, student centric learning where we will have to prompt the students, motivate the students for lot of self learning initiatives as well. Because whether it is a research or a industry problem solving, what is expected from the graduates is that their ability to continuously learn. The technology is changing so fast that they cannot stop learning at any point of time. They will have to be learning continuously. They will have to be lifelong learners. If they will have to be lifelong learners, self-learning is part of the learning exercise. So in the teaching learning process, effectively the relationship between a teacher and the student is becoming that of a mentor and the students where the teachers will have to mentor the students to learn, create inquisitiveness, create the awareness to question, to experiment and to learn new things. Similarly, in the assessment also, we are drifting away from the examination oriented mark driven assessment. Rather, we are moving towards outcome based assessment where the students will have to attempt a problem, find a solution for that, try something new on the hands on experience, eventually more project based learning, more outcome based learning, activity based learning. I think these are the changes which have been there for more than one and a half decades now, but being looked at more seriously more effectively by all the stakeholders of the higher education system, maybe during the last decade and about five or six years now. The innovation is not just the buzzword, it is certainly making a difference. Uh, because how do we look at a problem? How do we look at a solution to the problem? It will have to be different. The present graduates, the aspiring engineers or any graduate for that matter cannot afford to think in a routine manner. They will have to be out of the box thinkers. They will have to be innovative and creative thinkers from the way they look at a problem, from the way they look at solutions to the problem. So, innovation is becoming an integral part of problem solving, particularly with respect to engineering education. I very firmly believe that this is becoming more and more of an interdisciplinary approach. I very frequently mention that if we take an automotive for example, till a few years ago, it was treated to be the domain of a mechanical engineer. But now I cannot say that anymore because there is more electronics, there is more computing, there is more protocol into any automotive which gets rolled out today. So the line between the different branches of study of engineering is becoming thinner and thinner. Everybody should have a basic domain knowledge built on top of that. 
knowledge on digital technology, appreciation for the technology and application of those technology to the basic engineering domain from which they are choosing a problem to be solved. The innovation centers in the universities and colleges they basically motivate students to think differently, to try hands on whatever be the thoughts. Maybe if quite a few times it could be some crazy thought. After attempting something the students may realize that this is not the way to go about but still does not matter. They have attempted something which is different which would certainly motivate them to travel through that path more vigorously, more aggressively so that they are able to develop their thought process, the thinking process to think different towards a problem solving. I feel innovation centers should not only be part of an institution as an infrastructure, it should be part of learning, it should be part of assessment. I say that it should be part of assessment also because during the initial periods of takeoff, unless the students are convinced that they will be assessed for this also, they may not show interest. Once they are convinced about that, probably it automatically becomes a routine process for them to be part of the innovation ecosystem as well. So, once the students they get interested into something to be innovative, I feel that they will have to start looking around what we call as uh, empathy to maybe a particular segment of a society or a particular sector of uh, industry problem solving etc. They will have to look at a problem or they should look around identify a problem and then convert that into a technical problem statement and then try to solve that problem, develop a solution for that, validate that. Once the concept is validated, I think they will have to move towards how best it could be either converted into a product or it could be a full service solution so that it could be commercialized. A team of members who get into such new attempts of either a product or a service or a solution, they will have to be motivated in an incubation center to become the founders of the startup for which the mentoring support system, maybe some initial seed funding once they mature, once they graduate, taking them towards a venture capital or other funding process will have to build over a period of time in an educational institution so that we are able to create job creators rather than the job seekers. The institutions who have innovation centers, the institution who have incubation facilities would certainly be able to produce more students who think differently, who are able to identify problems and find solutions. They will be able to generate huge job opportunities which in turn will contribute to the overall economic growth of the country a sort of a satisfaction that I do not do it for myself, I do it for the community as well. Because of me about 10 families, 10 individuals they prosper and if this grows multifold, I think we should be able to meet with the expectations and the vision of the Honorable Prime Minister of the country as well. It is quite evident from these insights that our educational institutions are gearing up to the challenge of Vikasit Bharata 2047. We congratulate Sri Ramakrishna College of Engineering for developing an effective ecosystem for innovators and hope that their students will be contributing positively in solving the real world problems and play a role in making India a developed nation.